This is a story of an orphan child who grew up to become the guiding beacon for billions throughout the history of the world. A story of a simple shepherd who became the catalyst of a movement that would go on to reshape the world. A story of a man who was perfect in character, appearance and faith. This is the story of the Prophet Muhammad. May peace be upon him, the Messenger of Allah. In the heart of the Arabian Peninsula, in the year 570 CE, a remarkable life began, a life that would change the course of history. In the city of Mecca, amidst a barbaric world of tribal feuds and idol worship, a child named Muhammad was born to Amina and Abdullah of the Banu Hashim clan, his father passing away before his birth, leaving him in the care of his grandfather, Abdul Muttalib, and mother, Amina, who both recognized the child's unique qualities of honesty, kindness, and wisdom. At around the age of six, he lost his mother on a journey from Medina to Mecca, becoming an orphan and now at the care of his uncle Abu Talib, who cared and brought him up like his own. Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam worked as a shepherd and a merchant. He was known as Al-Amin and Al-Sadiq, the trustworthy and the truthful at his early years. Being an honest trader who never cheated his partners or customers, he would accompany his uncle and his caravan's journeys to places such as Syria and around the lands of Mecca and Medina. If there was no business or trade, he would tend to the sheep and goats of Mecca's residents as a humble shepherd where he had time for contemplation and solitude in the open deserts of the Arabian Peninsula. In one of these trade missions, he was hired by a wealthy woman of the Quraysh tribe known as Khadija, a widow which after witnessing his remarkable integrity, character and mannerisms became deeply impressed. Filled with admiration and respect, she proposed to him through a third party called Nafisa, a close friend of hers. He was only 25 at the time and Khadija was 40. Their marriage was one of love, compassion and friendship. Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam began to regularly retreat to the cave of Hira, located in the mountains near Mecca. He enjoyed the solitary contemplation and devotion, seeking spiritual insight and reflecting on the world around him. He knew that there was more to this world than simple wealth and power. Even with these retreats, which would go on for days at a time, Khadija's love and admiration for him did not wither. Rather, it grew day by day. At the age of 40, in 610 CE on one of these retreats in the cave, Muhammad, peace be upon him, heard a voice, one which was unique and different, not the voice of a man or any voice known to him, unique yet unfrightening. It said, Read. He responded with, I can't read. I am not a reader. Again, the voice said, Read. Again, he responded, I can't read. I am not a reader. For a third time, the voice said, Read. For a third, he responded, I can't read, I am not a reader. The voice this time replied, Recite in the name of your Rab who created, created man from a clinging substance. Read, and your Lord is the most generous, who taught by the pen, taught man that which he knew not. A sudden cold, an anxiety, a sense of worry took over him. He then rushed down the mountains, out of the caves to the person who he could rely on, Khadija. He ran to her, cold, shivering, and in a state of awe, saying, cover me, cover me. Khadija immediately covering and embracing him, comforting him in a state which most would question the sanity of a person. His wife trusted him so much that even in that state she attended and comforted him, not with judgment, but support and words of encouragement that God would never let you down. You are the most upright amongst the men, most generous and compassionate. This was the first revelation that came to the Prophet. With more to come, these first few revelations were all about the core aspects of this new religion. The oneness of God, the concept of prophethood, the resurrection and the hereafter, rejecting idolatry and ethical conduct. The key message of the religion being that there is no God but Allah, and Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. This simple message carried with it the seeds of transformation, shaking the very foundations of the established power structures in Mecca and the Arabian Peninsula. Mecca at the time was the center of pilgrimage. Tribes from all corners of the Arabian Peninsula flocked to the Kaaba, 
paying tributes, offering sacrifices, and contributing their wealth to the tribal leaders who controlled this sacred site. The pilgrimage business was not just a matter of devotion, it was a source of great wealth and influence. Once the Prophet was granted permission from Allah to take the message of monotheism public, it began to pose a direct challenge to the status quo. It meant that there was only one true deity, and all other idols and deities were false. This undermined the entire pantheon of gods and goddesses worshipped by various tribes. This had immense implications for the tribal leaders who profited from this system. If there were no other deities to be worshipped, the business of pilgrimage, the collection of tributes, and the tax that supported the idols would become obsolete. The established powers recognized the threat posed by the message of monotheism and sought to suppress it. Their greed and hunger for power blinded them, oppressing the few followers of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam with severe and extreme suffering and anguish, especially those who had no clan or tribe to protect them, which was the majority of the followers. The Prophet himself was under the protection of the Banu Hashim and his uncle Abu Talib. This, however, did not mean complete immunity. He was constantly subject to humiliation, verbal and even physical abuse, social boycott, threats and attacks. This went on and on for 13 years, each day increasing in persecution and discrimination. Each day they faced new forms of torture and humiliation. Each day they were subjected to boycotts and abuse. In the 10th year of the Prophet's mission in 619 CE, commonly referred to as the Year of Sorrow, the Prophet faced unparalleled challenges. This period marked the devastating loss of his cherished wife, Khadija, and his uncle, Abu Talib, two indispensable figures in his life. Khadija, an unwavering pillar of support, embodied boundless love and compassion. Abu Talib, a stalwart protector, shielded the Prophet from the adversities posed by the Quraysh and Meccan opponents. Their death left a void that echoed beyond personal loss, shaping the trajectory of the Prophet's mission and strengthened his faith in Allah. The tipping point was on the 13th year, after learning about an assassination attack on the life of the Prophet. All began to migrate to Yathrib, also known as Medina a neighboring city whose people were fond of the Prophet, his character, and his teachings. Therefore, in the midst, the night's darkness, the Prophet was the left Mecca, leaving Ali, his cousin, the son of Abu Talib, who had been under the care of the Prophet and one of the first men to become Muslim had taken his place, laying in the bed as the assassins, one from each tribe of Mecca, came to take his life. Ali bin Abu Talib was also set free after the Meccans realized that it was him laying the place of the Prophet as they had no intentions of killing Ali. This is known as the year of Hijra, and it is the beginning of the Islamic calendar. And with this migration, the followers of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam could begin to practice their religion and faith in safety, free from persecution and discrimination. Once in Medina, with the support of the Ansar, meaning the helpers, the Prophet began to launch raids on the caravans of the powers of Mecca, taking back the wealth and property of the Muslims who were once robbed, as well as diminishing the wealth and influence of Mecca. As a result of these raids and small skirmishes, the Muslims would come to face their first major trial at the Battle of Badr in 624 CE. Despite being outnumbered, divine intervention and the unbreakable spirit of the men led to a resounding victory, establishing the Muslims' resilience. The following year, in 625 CE, the Battle of Uhud tested the community's mettle, a tragic battle which started with the Muslims in the upper hand. However, with a vital mistake from the archers, unforeseen challenges arose. Shifting the tides, the Muslims went on the back foot, with the Prophet narrowly escaping death thanks to Allah and the fearless and courageous companions around him who found heroically becoming martyrs, including Hamza, another uncle of the Prophet, who was amongst the first to accept his message and fight valiantly next to him. The Battle of the Trench in 627 CE saw the Muslims fortify Medina against a coalition of adversaries. A trench, a symbol of unity, shielded the city, 
showcasing strategic acumen and determination. The tenacity of the Muslims and the Prophet, along with the importance of patience and perseverance. In 628 CE, the Treaty of Hudaybiyah marked an unexpected turning point. Despite initial setbacks, the treaty set the way for a period of peace, allowing Islam to spread and hearts to open. However, with a minor battle between two tribes, the treaty was broken, leading to the triumphal entry into Mecca in 629 CE, which was a watershed moment. With no bloodshed, the city that once expelled the Prophet embraced Islam, signifying the victory of patience and forgiveness. The city which tortured and abused the people of Islam were welcomed to embrace it with only a few who were punished but not because of the crimes against the Prophet, rather because of crimes they had been proven to commit on to others. With the success of this, the Arabian Peninsula was solidified and united as one under the banner of Allah and his messenger. And as the year of delegations unfolded in 631 CE, tribes from far and wide embraced Islam, culminating in the Prophet's peaceful consolidation of support. This year consisted of the tribes within the Arabian Peninsula coming to Medina, pledging allegiance and some accepting Islam. However, the sands of time did not halt. In 632 CE, the farewell pilgrimage became a poignant milestone. The Prophet's final sermon at Mount Arafat echoed through history, encapsulating the core principles of Islam and one of the last revelations of the Quran being revealed to him then. اليوم أكملت لكم دينكم وأتممت عليكم نعمتي ورضيت لكم الإسلام دينا. This day I have perfected for you your religion and completed my favor upon you and have approved for you Islam as religion. Quran 5:3. Tragedy struck in the subsequent year as the Prophet's health began to decay, leading to his heartbreaking but peaceful passing. His departure left a great void, but his legacy endured. He left this world with Allah's name in his heart and his last words in praising him, a great man who set the foundations for a religion of billions throughout history. This is how an orphan child became the guiding beacon for billions throughout the history of the world. The story of a simple shepherd who became the catalyst of a movement that reshaped the Arabian Peninsula. The story of a man who was perfect in character and faith, a man with a mission, a divine objective, a message to spread to each corner of the globe and to perfect the character of men.